Hi! In this video we're going to solve um, a first order initial value problem by using the Laplace transform and um, we'll go over a number of things in order to to get to find the, the solution. So um, first, since the right hand side of the ODE is a function defined by cases, we are going to rewrite uh, that right hand side in terms of unit step functions so that when we apply the Laplace transform on both sides of the ODE, next, we get to use um, some properties of the Laplace transform, um, namely the Laplace transform of derivatives and the Laplace transform of unit step functions. Um, then we are going to uh, find to solve for the Laplace transform of the, of the solution to this problem. And finally, we will find the solution to the problem by computing the inverse transform of the transform of the function. Okay, so let's start with uh, rewriting the right hand side of the ODE in terms of unit step functions. So we can use um, the property of, of the Laplace transform with unit step functions. And then, and then we continue with other parts. So, um, remember that um, Unit step functions are very special. Um, they're functions that um, satisfy the following. So say um, the unit step function centered at three is a function that takes a value zero up to three, where it takes a step up and starts taking the value one. The unit step function centered at six is the same thing, but instead of uh, having to step at 3, we have a step at 6. So the function takes a value 0 up to t equals 6. And then um, it steps up to the height uh, height 1. So here we have this kind of picture. Um, unit step functions are important in applications. Uh, for instance, if we, um, if we think of applications and um, in electric engineering, uh, often there would be some, say, circuits that would, um, for which external forces would get uh, switched off or on. Things get turned off and on, and uh, turning off and on brings um, gaps and, and um, jumps in functions, and then we can see that step functions uh, arise naturally in, in that kind of application. Um, now, we want to match um, the function we were given, the function defined by cases, with an expression that looks like this. Uh, something times the unit step function centered at 3, plus something times the unit step function centered at 6, plus a constant, or something in general. It doesn't have to be a constant, but we will see it will be a constant in our case. So, let's see. Um, since we want uh, the function defined by cases to match this expression, we want, in particular, uh, the following. So say at t equal to 2, uh, the function by cases would give us a 0, and that should be equal to a times u at 2 minus 3 plus b times u at 2 minus 6 plus c. And we will get a 0 from here and a 0 from here because those unit functions are always taking the value 0 before where the step takes place. And since 2 is before 3 and 2 is before 6, both functions vanish. So unit step functions vanish. So we end up with c equals uh, 0. Uh, on the other hand, um, on the, uh, when t equals, say, 4, so we move to the next case, uh, we get the number 10. And at the same time, we should get a times u at 4 minus 3 plus b times u at 4 minus 6, and then plus um, the constant c. And we know that c is 0, and um, the unit step function centered at 3 will take the value 1 at 4 because 4 is beyond where the step happened. And then um, the unit step function centered at 6 takes the value 0 because um, the, the function is still at height at the uh, ground level. So 
So here we get that um, a takes the value 10. And uh, finally, we have um, that a t equal to, um, say in this case, we can take, for instance, 7. We should get the number 0. And notice that um, no matter what we choose for t, as long as t is greater than 7, we get 0. And that should be equal to a times u at 7 minus 3 plus b times u at 7 minus 6 plus c. And we know that c is 0. And uh, unit step function centered at 6 will take the value 1 at 7 because 7 is beyond where the step happened. Same with the unit step function centered at 3. So uh, we will have that, um, so let me write here, that we found uh, c equals 0, a equals 10. And according to the equation for t equals 7, we have that the 0 equals a plus b plus 0. And a was 10, so b turns out to be minus 10. So this way we get um, to uh, we rewrite the right hand side of the ODE in terms of unit step functions. So the right hand side turns out to be 10 u t minus 3 minus 10 u t minus 6 plus 0. Okay. Once the right hand side of the equation is um, in terms of those functions that um, that allow for jumps, we apply the Laplace transform on both sides of the ODE. So we do Laplace transform of y prime plus 3 times y equals the Laplace transform of 10 ut minus 3 uh, minus 10 ut minus 6. Uh, by the way, in case you're curious about the function on the right hand side of the ODE, that's called the boxcar function. Um, so the function is at height 0, before 3, after 6, and it takes a constant value 10 between 3 and 6. That's something called the boxcar function. And notice that we are at height 10 as opposed to height 1. Okay. Um, Back to where we were, uh, we take the Laplace transform of the uh, left hand side of the equation and we make it equal to the Laplace transform of the right hand side because we had if we had a solution then both sides would have to be equal. So the Laplace transforms have to match. And we find that um, the Laplace transform of y prime plus 3 times the Laplace transform of y, and that comes from the fact that uh, the Laplace transform is linear so we can you know, we can pull constants out, we can distribute the Laplace transform when we have sums or subtractions, uh, equals uh, 10 times the Laplace transform of ut minus 3 minus 10 the Laplace transform of ut minus 6. And um, as, um, as I said um, at the beginning, uh, we get to use the Laplace transform of the derivative and that's that's s times the Laplace transform of the function minus the function at zero. And then we have plus three times and the Laplace transform of the function is what we denote by y capital Y. And this equals ten times and the Laplace transform of a unit step function is an exponential divided by s. So we have this transforms minus 6s divided by s. And now we insert the value of y at 0, the one that was given to us. So, um, so we get um, s y minus 1. And if you had a different value, then you just insert whatever value you have there. Equals uh, 10 each to the minus 3s over s minus 10 
e to the minus 6 as over s. So now we have, um, we don't have any more transforms to find. Uh, to be found, we just have an equation that relates capital Y with a bunch of stuff with s. So we're going to erase what we have up to this point, except for the last line. And now, uh, and then we will move on to to the next part. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. So once we have an equation, um, for that involves capital Y and uh, things with S, we want to solve for Y. So, um, in order to find the Laplace transform of a function, and then we find the function by using the inverse transform. So here, uh, notice that on the left hand side we have, um, we have uh, some like terms. We have S plus 3, all that times Y. And then um, we can bring the minus 1 over to the right to get uh, 10 e to the minus 3s over s minus 10 e to the minus 6s over s plus 1. And um, this is the same as having y equals 10 e to the minus 3s over s times s plus 3 minus 10 e to the minus 6s and then s s plus 3 plus 1 over s plus 3. So we're dividing everything by the coefficient of capital Y. In this way we get the Laplace transform of Y and we find that um, the Laplace transform of Y is given by um, by this equation. So I'm going to erase this part and leave the Laplace transform of y. There we go. And then um, now the last step consists of finding y. And to find y we find the Laplace, the inverse transform of capital Y. And um, that's the inverse transform of 10 e to the minus 3s over s s plus 3 minus 10 e to the minus 6s over s times s plus 3 and then plus 1 over s plus 3. And um, we will We'll spend the rest of the video um, figuring out how to find that inverse transform. Okay, um, I wanted to say if you have any questions at any point, um, please don't hesitate to make comments and I will be happy to help. And um, I know these problems are really long, but um, don't, don't wait until get to the very last part to to think about something you didn't feel quite sure about in the middle. So you know, ask questions, work on things on the go, and then um, and yeah, if you if you want to make a comment or um, you want to know more about something, then you're more than welcome to to um, to make a comment, and I will follow up with you. Okay. So, so far we have um, done the following. We have done various things, um, but we can we can see the summary right here. Um, first, we rewrote the right-hand side of the equation in terms of unit step functions. Second, we applied the Laplace transform to the ODE and used a couple of properties to uh, find an equation relating capital Y and functions with S in them. And then we solved for y, capital Y, the Laplace transform of the function. And now we want to find the function, the actual solution to the ODE, by taking the inverse transform of uh, capital Y. So 
Let's let's see how we find that inverse transform. So I'm going to erase this part here, and um, let's move. Let's see, let's move this a bit out uh, this way. Um. Okay. Now, um, what happens at this point is that um, so we have the following. Here we have ten times the inverse transform of e to the minus three s over s s plus three. And then minus ten times the inverse transform of e to the minus six s over s times x plus three. And then we have, um, oops, let's move this a bit to the left so we can cut that last term. And we can all see that. So we have the Laplace, the inverse transform of 1 over s plus 3. Okay. Now, um, we can see that this inverse transform is, is something we can we we should be familiar with. Um, this comes from an exponential, and the exponent will be minus uh, three times t. So that's that inverse transform is okay. Um, we can use a table of transforms and match. The transform the inverse transform of one over s minus a with e to the um, a times t so that's that's okay um, but the other two transforms are not really ready um, we can't really find those inverse transforms by using the table but we have to work a bit harder we see that we'll end up with um, unit step functions because we have these exponentials involved in transforms, but uh, the denominators s times s plus 3 for both terms are uh, such that we can we can kind of like decompose them into two parts to find an inverse transform and use a table to do that. So let's rewrite, uh, so now we're going to do something called partial fractions. We're going to rewrite 1 over s times s plus 3 um, in terms of fractions, we're going to see, going to do a, a constant times, or well, constant divided by s plus a constant divided by s plus 3. Now we want to do this because um, then we will be able to um, tell, to match the, the transforms we have there with the transform of something, and we will use a table. Now if we want um, 1 over s times s plus 3 to be a over s plus b over s plus 3, we're um, imposing that um, a times s plus 3 plus b times s divided by s times s plus 3 coincides with 1 over s times s plus 3. So 1 should be a times s plus 3 plus b times s and um, we can make choices for s to get the value of a and the value of b and um, actually we can see that um, for instance when um, um, so let's move this a bit like this so we have enough space here. So, okay, so when we take, um, for instance, um, s equal to 0, we find that um, 1 equals 3a. So we can see that a equals 1 third. And when s equals minus 3, we get that 1 equals minus 3b. 
So B is minus one third. So that way we can do the following. So I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to move this a bit to the top so we don't forget what we are trying to find. And I will work on the bottom part. So we find that um, 1 over s times s plus 3 equals 1 third times 1 over s and then minus 1 third 1 over s plus 3. And then what happens is that um, we can rewrite um, the quotient e to the minus 3 over s times s plus 3 as a third of e to the minus 3s over s minus e to the minus 3s over s plus 3. And that's, that's a good thing because then we can see that um, we're doing e to, the, to this exponential divided by s, this exponential divided by s plus 3. And the inverse transform of that is something we know um, because the exponential of minus 3s divided by s corresponds to the Laplace transform of a unit step function. We get one third, and um, that will give us the unit step function centered at three. And um, the second part will give us, um, so instead of um, just the unit step function, we actually have um, an exponential because one over s plus three corresponds to the Laplace transform of, um, of an exponential. So, um, we will have, um, we will have the following. So minus three, and then we will have, um, t minus three, and we will have a unit step function. And we're going to rewrite this. So things are getting bulky. Um, it's always like that. I'm sorry about that. I have to move so many things around because I don't want to lose um, like what our goal is. So we have so we have this and then we will have the unit step function at uh, t minus 3. And um, what I'm using here is that um, the Laplace transform of a function that is um, translated so in this case, we're translating this by um, by three. Let me see, by three times the unit step function centered at three uh, will be um, the Laplace transform of a function times the exponential. So. Um, we have the, the unit function that's generated from e to the minus 3s. So we have unit function at t minus 3. Um, and um, this part, 1 over s minus 3 is the Laplace transform of, um, of the function um, e to the minus 3 times t. Um, but um, when we take the product of those transforms, we're coming from the translation of f times the unit step function. So we need to translate the exponential further. So instead of e to the minus 3t, we'll have e to the minus 3 times t minus 3. So that's, that's what we will have. And uh, similarly, we will have that... Um, the part uh, e to the minus 6s divided by s times s plus 3 is the same as one third e to the minus 6s over s 
minus e to the minus 6s over s plus 3. And that will come from a one-third of, and I forget the brackets here, there you go. The one-third and the first uh, transform corresponds to the transform of the unit step function centered at 6 while uh, the second transform corresponds to an exponential but shifted and the shifting is uh, t minus 6 so we have minus 3 and instead of t we have t minus 6 times the unit step function centered at 6 so that's what we have for that part so um okay so We have that um, the function we're looking for, the solution to the equation, uh, will be the following one. So 10 times, and remember that this transform came from, from this function over here. So 10 times that, that's going to be 10 thirds. Of, um, and there we have, uh, we can actually take the unit step function as a, as a common factor. And then inside we have a 1 minus e to the minus 3 times t minus 3. Um, that part is gone. And then the second term will be a minus 10 thirds unit step function, this time t minus 6 and then we get 1 minus e to the minus 3 t minus 6 and then um, we have um, a simple Laplace transform that's an exponential of minus 3 t and we don't have any any translation um, we just have minus 3 t and um, we don't have any we don't have any exponential in the Laplace transform, so we don't generate any unit step function. And that's the answer to this problem. So, so there we have um, there we have the answer to the problem. And uh, to summarize what we did in order to find y, uh, like in the very last step, we all uh, used partial fractions to decompose one over s times s plus three into two parts, one corresponding to 1 over s and the other one corresponding to 1 over s plus 3, and we had some coefficients. And we did that so that we could match um, e to the minus 3s divided by s with the Laplace transform of u of t minus 3, and similarly with e to the minus 6s divided by s. And then we matched um, e to the minus 3s divided by s plus 3 with the Laplace transform of an exponential times the unit step function and the exponential was shifted because of the, of the property of the Laplace transform with functions that are shifted times the unit step function with the same shifting and, um, and we ended up with this, with this solution. Okay, uh, if you have a different initial condition you get slightly different constants. Um, notice that we used initial conditions somewhere on the way to finding um, that was the Laplace transform of a function, so you you get some constants, some diff like slight differences in constants, but let's say the idea is very similar. Okay, so again, if you have questions or comments or anything you want to say, then uh, please make a comment, and I will be happy to be in contact with you. That's all for this video, and um, yeah. That's it. Bye-bye.